Hi there, and welcome to the ninth episode in our Circle 2 tutorial series. Today we're going to be making an analog underwater pad. This is going to be quite an authentic analog sound with quite a few modulation routings going on and should be usable within a wide range of musical styles. So we're going to start off by initializing the patch by clicking new and then we're going to select our oscillators. So in slot one we will have an analog oscillator and we're going to use a square wave in here and we're going to tune this down by 12 semitones and in slot 2 we'll have another analog oscillator this time we'll leave this as a sawtooth wave and we'll tune this down by 12 semitones as well and now we're just going to balance out the level of these two oscillators here And we're also going to detune these apart. So we'll turn this one down by 10 and push this one up by 10. And this is going to give us some nice textural movement. Okay, and now in our third oscillator slot here, we'll have another analog oscillator. And this time we're going to use a triangle wave. And we're going to tune this down by two octaves. So this is going to be giving some bass to the sound. And finally, in our slot here, we'll turn on the noise oscillator and just push this cutoff up to about there. And then just turning that down a bit on the mixer as well. Okay, now for our amplitude envelope. We want this to have a nice long attack and quite a long decay and some release as well. Just so it has the pad style envelope. Okay, and now for our filter and filter envelope, we'll go into the filter here and leave this as a two pole low pass. Just pull that frequency down and push that resonance up as well. And now for the filter envelope, we want this to have a similar shape to the amplitude envelope, just with a lower sustain level. Okay, and now to give our sound the underwater feel, we're going to use some LFO modulation here. So we'll turn on this LFO here, and then we're just going to create a more interesting waveform. So we'll just select this shape in the bottom section and then just create a blend between them. So we have this sort of sine stepped shape. Then going to select sync and retrig and just push this rate up a bit as well. And now we will assign that to the filter cutoff. <laughs> Okay, and now we're just going to add some more modulation to this using a sequencer. So we'll turn on a sequencer in this slot. We'll turn on sync and retrig. Just increase that rate a bit. And then what we're going to do is assign this to the filter cutoff and then just experiment with some randomized sequencer patterns until we find one that sounds nice. <laughs> Wizard, 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 wizard
Okay, so that's quite a nice pattern for the sequencer. And that's sounding nice now, though perhaps we can just add some effects onto it to polish it off a bit. So we'll go into our effects slot here. And in slot one, we'll try a chorus. And this will give us some nice stereo width. Okay, so that definitely improves the sound. And finally, we're going to put a reverb in to slot two here. Just turn that on and we'll try this huge hall sub preset. Maybe we'll just turn down the size slightly. Okay, so that's sounding really cool now and definitely really atmospheric. And if we play chords in particular, this should have a really interesting texture. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today and we'll catch up with you in the next one.